What do the VCs do? Well, the VCs have a sort of masters of lots of trades. They have to be good at looking at you and figuring out whether you're worth investing in. Okay? So that's the whole uncertainty bit and not knowing you and trust is a big issue. There's a lot of fraud out there. Nobody likes to talk about that. Um, there's a lot of unreliable people and you know, not every idea is a good one. So they try to do their due diligence on you as much as possible. So that's one skill, screening. Bankers have to do that as well when they make a loan, but there's a huge difference in terms of the uncertainty that a banker faces when making a loan and what a VC faces when looking at a startup. So that's one thing they have to be good at. Then once they've given you a check, they're not going back to the offices and wait for you to report to them six months later to tell them how you're doing. They will want to sit on your board and they will want to uh, shape the company. And for many companies, that's actually a huge plus because the VCs have been sitting on many boards in the past and they've built up expertise and, and just knowledge of what can happen to a company and what you can do about it. They also have networks of people that they can bring uh, into the company, either people to work for the company or people who can help the company in other ways. So they will be active investors. So they will sit on your board and typically that's a nice relationship, but often it can also end up with conflict depending on different agendas in the boardroom. So VCs have to be good at actually helping to build companies, not just the screening, signing the check and then going home, but after that they have to actually be you know, in the background helping you build the companies. And some of the early stage VCs, so the ones who get in reasonably early just after the angels, might even be your head of sales on an interim basis or be the parachuted in CFO because you haven't found anybody for that role yet, but you need somebody. So it can be literally very hands-on involved in that. That's a completely different skill set from due diligence and screening and all that kind of thing. Third thing that VCs have to be good at is raising money. They're not investing their own money. Whose money are they investing? Institutions. Institutional investors. Okay. So it used to be high net worth individuals and then the industry became institutionalized around the world. So now it's the typical college endowments and you've got Oxford and Cambridge in there and you've got the big institutional investors in terms of uh, pension funds and insurance companies. Uh, sovereign wealth funds are becoming ever bigger in this and family offices are increasingly um, very organized about this. A few other bits and bobs, but those are the main ones. So they have to fundraise. And they have to raise these $100 million or whatever it is that their fund has as their firepower and then sign a check out of for you. And that's something that they're going to do um, periodically. Because these funds are raised in a time-limited fashion. So they're raising money from a bunch of different institutions, uh, setting up a legal entity, a fund, that will have a limited life. It will typically last for 10 years. And the VCs will use those 10 years to find companies to invest in and then hopefully add value to them and eventually realize capital gains out of that and give the money back to the investors. So by the time you reach year three, four, five in the life of a fund, you have to start beginning to think about raising the next fund because if you haven't got another fund, you have no money when the 10 years are up and you'll be out of business. So every few years, VCs are in fundraising mode and travel around the world and knock on the doors of the big accounts um, to try and raise money. And when they do that, what they will hope to impress the investors with is the amazing investment track record that they've built up. So they're going to effectively pitch an IRR game. They'll say we've made 15% or 20% or whatever on the life of the previous fund and the one before that and so on and so forth. So that's, again, a completely different skill set. Raising money from what are typically very conservative investors, right? Think sovereign wealth funds and those kinds of people who can invest in anything, and they do, in timber and in bonds and the stock market and everything else. And getting them to want to invest in your fund uh, is going to be a challenge because there are lots of other funds that are trying to pitch themselves as well.